Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover, your home for ice fishing news, tips, stories, and strategies. And now, your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. Joining us today is Cody Roswick from Finn Hunters Guide Service in Eastern North Dakota. Cody, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cody, I wanted to have you on today to talk about Devil's Lake. With the Canadian border being shut down, people are changing plans when it comes to their destination trips, and Devil's Lake is definitely going to be on the radar of many ice anglers. What makes Devil's Lake so special? Uh, What's most special about Devil's Lake is just the sheer abundance of fish, how fertile the system is, and how large it is. It, uh, It accommodates a lot of people. And you almost always catch fish at Devil's Lake, North Dakota. <laughs> that's a that's a good thing to almost always catch fish. There's a, there's yeah. a lot of water there. How does someone pin down a place to start fishing? I mean, where do you get started? If somebody's thinking about going out there, like there's a big lake. So I mean, what what kind of things should they start looking at to kind of pin down a spot to go? The lake's full of structure. It's got little arms and bays everywhere and there's there's a lot of rock structure in the lake there's a lot of big weed beds big flats and so it it's it really spreads everybody out there's there's you know at certain times of year there's certain parts of the lake that are better than others um you know shallow warmer water in the spring till midsummer then the whole lake starts to go real well and then in the fall it's the deep rocks that seem to get the most attention when does the ice season typically start out there? Uh, kind of give us an idea of what that season is like. When does it start, and, and what is considered kind of the late ice time on Devil's Lake? Well, I guide five to seven days a week, all of January, February, and March. And our early ice is typically around that Christmas time when you have good, safe ice. You can get out on a, you know, a four wheeler or a snowmobile to some of those early locations. Uh, but and then then shortly after New Year's, we typically are driving driving trucks or uh, track machines out on Devil's Lake. Lake levels have been high out there of late. What does the body of water look like right now as far as those levels go? Devil's Lake typically fluctuates a, a foot or two every year, and that's and that's the case this year. Um, came down a little bit late summer and into fall, but uh, the lake is full. Um, it's maybe six, eight feet lower than it's all time high, but, uh, in, com- in comparison to what it was in the seventies, it's up, it's up considerably. It's, uh, it, it's in a, it's fairly stable. The water levels are the last five to 10 years. And, uh, it's really helped the fishery. We got good spawning habitat and it shows out there. We got an abundance of walleyes. I'm hoping there's uh, a lot of perch this year. And uh, of course, there's lots of northern pike and white bass and and a few others. One thing that's unique about Devil's Lake is that it doesn't have an abundance of species in it. It only has walleyes, northern pike, perch, white bass, and a handful of crappies and white suckers because people used to fish uh, northerns with sucker minnows years ago. Um, it, it's a closed basin. It doesn't have a river going through it. We don't have a lot of, a uh, lot of rough fish. So, you know, no bullheads or catfish, sheephead, carp, anything like that. So what that does, it gives us a higher, uh, biomass of game fish, which obviously is a good thing if you're a fisherman. Yeah, that's, that's actually super, super interesting. And I, I think at least from my perspective, you know, I live in the, in the Twin Cities Metro, when people think Devil's Lake, they think those big jumbo perch. What is that perch bite like during the ice season? It can be real good. It can be challenging at times. And then we always got walleyes to fall back on. The uh, the perch fishing has been, uh, it's not the boom that we had uh, a few years ago, but there's still, a, there's still an abundance of perch out there. If you get on them, they're typically nice perch, you know. Last year, the eight to 12 inches seem to be the, the, the number, but they're, they're a little plumper, a little fatter than, than your average perch. They're, they're built like sumo wrestlers and they're, 
you know, getting a nice pound perch, you get a nice fillet off it. And if you get on a nice pot of them, you can keep 20 a day. And uh, people are real happy with that. Uh, yeah. You add that to a handful of walleyes, maybe a couple pike a day. It makes for some really good ice fishing. That sounds like a good time. What are some of the go-to lures and colors for you when you're fishing devils, whether it be for perch, walleye, um, northern? Kind of what is, what's your program like out there? Well, it's fairly simple. I use uh, a lot of 16-ounce uh, tungsten jigs, and I use a lot of uh, Northland buckshot rattle spoons and Northland forage minnow spoons. Small spoons and medium to large tungsten jigs with either wax worms or minnow heads or pretty much get the nod all season. And you're going, are you using kind of the, the same rig when it comes to walleye? What are you, what are you doing there? Yeah, small spoons, small to medium sized spoons for walleyes. Uh, you know, mornings and evenings are usually a little better for those walleyes. Uh, but there's days you catch them, catch them all day as well. You get, you know, cloudy overcast days and we, we like to, capitalize on that and fish walleyes those days so. yeah tell me a little bit about that walleye fishing what's the size structure like what's a day on the water out there on devils uh chasing those walleye like oh it's uh well typically you want to either uh start early morning or go go till dusk you know early in the season you can you know in an eight hour day you can, you can usually do that uh without any trouble at all the uh the walleyes are typically a little shallower than the perch. You know, the the walleye spots, you know, a lot of like 10 to 20 foot stuff for walleyes. You fish a lot of, you know, 25 to even 45 feet for those perch. Sometimes they intermingle. A lot of times those big perch think they're walleyes and they run right with the walleyes, which is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, small spoons and a minnow head is really tough to beat. Sometimes uh, little glide baits or small rattle baits work well. But day in and day out, a buckshot rattle spoon is tough to beat on Devil's Lake. Awesome. Uh, someone thinking about making the trip out to Devil's Lake, what should they be aware of before heading west? Is there something that, hey, when you come to Devil's Lake, this is kind of what you need to think about? Um, some, maybe some people that haven't fished there before, what should they plan on before heading out there? Always check on the snow conditions. A lot of times we have uh, a considerable amount of snow when, you know, a track machine is... Uh, what it takes to be extremely mobile uh you know there's not a there's not a road system on devil's lake so you um you know travel on the ice is something that you need to check out um you know it, it, as a guide uh keeps me pretty busy out there because a lot of times uh people just call and rely on uh, myself or some of the other guides on the lake to help them with their trip uh it's a big it's a big system it's a big body of water when it comes to uh, packing for your trip, basically keep uh, things to a minimum so that you can be efficient and moving out there. It, if you're uh, mobile on the ice, that really helps in your, your catch rate. Um, and that's pretty much anywhere you go, but especially on Devil's Lake, um, you know, moving around, even, even small, uh, you know, 50, 100 yard moves some days uh, can make or break your day. Uh, those fish, they, they just move around quite a bit. So you got to stay on top of them and the more mobile you are, the more fish you'll catch typically. Hey, I forgot to ask you about that northern fishing. What's your what's your northern program like? Are you just fishing tip ups? How are you going after those northern? Um, it, it's typically a, a mix of tip ups, and then I'll set up a, a couple portable shelters and jig for them as well. Um, you know, if we're specifically targeting northerns, um, you know, sometimes we'll catch some walleyes mixed in with the when we're uh, targeting northerns and uh so yeah just a you know a medium to large spoon with a with a full minnow and then uh lay a uh, uh a trap of uh uh tip ups out there too you can you can run up to four tip ups per person or four lines per person so it's usually a mix of tip ups and and jigging for them and surprisingly you catch there's there's days when you catch a lot of them jigging versus versus tip ups just that little bit of movement can increase your catch many of the days when the when the bites maybe not um as uh aggressive as as a, you know typically the mid mid winter the fish are a little negative and 
uh, adding a, a jigging program to your pike fishing usually helps. That's what I'm getting nice. at. Is there something about fishing Devil's Lake? I'm sure there's millions of things, but there's something that, that you wanted to talk about today that I didn't ask you about. One of the biggest things is uh, stay mobile, have good electronics, uh, trust your electronics. Sometimes uh, the perch and even the walleyes, um, they'll come in and look at it. And then um, if you stay after them, you kind of pinpoint them. And uh, there's uh, kind of magic magic times during the day where they'll they'll turn on for a while and if you're if you're in the right spot for that hour you'll catch you know a fair amount of fish so trust your electronics and uh staying mobile is probably the biggest key to success out on devil's lake and the whole devil's lake basin somebody wants to take the guesswork out of their trip to devil's lake want to uh, book a trip with you at finn hunter's guide service what's the best way for them to get in touch with you they can get a hold of me on uh, through social media, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my website is finhunters.com, or they can give me a call. My name's Cody Roswick. The phone number is 701-840-5407. Cody Roswick, thanks so much for joining the show. Really appreciate your time. You bet. Thanks a lot. Everybody have a great, safe ice season. Thanks for listening to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover. For more ice fishing content, visit our blog at catchcover.com.